Okay, so we've covered uh, cheetah heads and um, had some fun doing that. So why don't we get into uh, talking about the cheetah's body. And I'm going to talk about a loc uh, locomotion a little bit and drawing their body. I'm just going to kind of jam a few different things into this video. Um, but uh, um, let's just go ahead and just dive right in. Uh, I prepared, once again, I prepared a few drawings uh, to get ready for this video. And the first thing, like I was talking about earlier with the, um, with the, with the head, is just how much more slightly built a cheetah is. They're, they, they're much more slender. Like I said, everything about them is about speed. And one thing I want to talk about, one of the big things that gives a cheetah its speed is this section right here, this lumbar section right there. Remember we were talking about before, you know, our, our areas of, of rigidity and flexibility going down the body like so. Well, and then rigid here, and then obviously flexible. This area of flexibility right here is, let me blow that up. That's huge. They really can bend that part of their body a lot. And, uh, and this is what one of the things that gives them their speed. They can really bring those, that, 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 those hind quarters underneath and dig for those, you know, get those feet into the, the back feet right into the ground and thrust driving forward into that next dry into that next uh, stride. And they cover so much distance in those strides. The other thing, too, is our bodies can really stretch. So not only can they compress where this can bend really right here, this can bend really well, but they can also stretch for that next stride. And so and they can just explode. So that's one of the big things that gives a cheetah its, its speed. Once again, plus it's very, very slight build. So here I've created the musculature over the cat. And um, and already right off the bat, you can see, matter of fact, let me, uh, let me pull this guy over. Remember this guy from a few videos back? Now look at the difference between the lion and the cheetah. Now obviously, just size-wise, a cheetah is much smaller. It's probably about... Oh, it's probably about that. They look about that much. Maybe actually the lion might even be a little bit bigger. But look at look how heavily muscled the lion is. And then look at how slight the cheetah is. And it's really, you know, when you look at runners, you know, human runners, the fastest runners, they're strong just like this. You can see a lot of strength in them, but they're not the big bulky weightlifters like lions are. Lions are, all, you know, lions take down, you know, big water buffalo and, and, uh, you know, they, they've even been known to bring down small elephants. Um, and cheetahs are just not that. They, they go for more gazelles and antelope and, and that sort of thing. And once again, it's all about the speed. But I wanted to point out again also, once again, you know, look at the, the musculature, all the muscles, they have all the same muscles and we have the same muscles as them as well. They're just laid out in different ways on us. And, and they're obviously proportioned differently on the two cats. Okay. And then, uh, and then once again, I'm just going to go ahead on this guy and then I'll just throw that on top. And so I wanted to talk about the spots a little bit too, because once again, just like on the leopards, if I sit here and draw spots for you guys all day, then it's going to, we're going to spend three quarters of our time just drawing spots. And that's not something I want to do, but I want to just talk about, Look at the uh, look at the spots first of all. I, while I'm on that subject, the spots, unlike the leopard, are just that. They're spots all over the body. You'll also notice that there's a nice shaggy area right above the the uh, shoulder blades there. And on the young cats, if you remember me talking in the last video, they've got all this fur, this white fur that comes back. And some have speculated, like I said earlier, that they look somewhat like a honey badger. And I know that's kind of a random thing to say, but honey badgers in Africa are extremely fierce. There's not a lot of animals that will mess with a honey badger. And so some have speculated that it's kind of a defense mechanism for the young to look like a honey badger. Maybe, um, it'll, you know, predators, other, you know, other threats will leave them alone. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. I think animals are probably smarter than that, but it's at least a theory that I've heard in the past. Um, but once again, you know, just like in the other cats, you've got, you know, this hollow right under the hips, you know, where, uh, where the legs come in, you get, you know, really comes around. If we, if we were to do a cross section, if we were to do a cross section right through here, you would have 
you know, looking straight down the body, you'd have this kind of shape happening, going into the belly. All right, right there. Now let me erase under there. Like so. And then there, that'd be your spinal spinal column right there. So this this comes in right in this section. And then this section here is more traditionally shaped, which you would expect with the ribs coming out and the muscles and the spine right there. Okay? So once again, going back to these spots, these spots are very, very regularly spaced. They're all really consistent in size. They, you know, on the inside, outside, they just, you know, they get a little smaller as we go up into the neck. We already went over the spots on the, on the head. Um, but you'll notice that there's some little spots here and there in between as you get into the, the side of the cat. Some of them have it, some of them don't. Um, and then there's also, there's a... Uh, kind of a genetic mutation. There's another cheetah. It's not a different species, but it's another cheetah uh, called a king cheetah. And their spots are completely different. You can imagine there's not being spots here. You know, their spots on their body actually are really big like this and kind of, kind of go all over their body like so. They're very, very strange looking. And it's a genetic mutation. But they're very rare. This is, this is what uh, you know, the cheetah looks like. But also, once again, let's get into, you know, look how long the limbs are, how small the head is in relation to the body. Every, like I said, everything about this cat is about, about aerodynamics. It's about speed. Even the tail compared to body is big. And what that tail does, that tail enables the cat to turn on a dime. It's a counterbalance. It's, it, it gives balance. And so that tail, you know, really helps them a lot, out a lot in direction changes. Um, and if you watch, if you watch antelope and gazelles and that sort of thing, if you, um, you know, with the cat chasing them, you'll see that they're constantly changing direction. That's what the, the, you know, the prey is always trying to do. They want to, you know, it, it's, it's what they do in football games too. And it's all about, you know, trying to throw off that, that pursuer. And so these cats have this incredible ability to, first of all, stay very focused. When they're up to speed and running, their head will stay very, very level. They'll be very focused on the prey, and they will zig and zag and follow that prey every direction. So I think it's uh, they're, they're just absolutely amazing. And also, let's go down into the feet. Once again, looking at these claws, notice the claws are sticking out. The claws on a cheetah always, always stick out. So the claws on a cheetah always stick out. They don't retract. And once again, that is for just like cleats on running shoes. Those, those are there to grip the ground when, they, uh, when they're trying to run. And they're running hard and fast. Okay. So, um, you know, look at these proportions. This head is small, very, very fluid. This nice, strong, fluid flow into that body. Okay. It's very fluid. The belly isn't isn't really that big. And we'll see when I do some drawings of the cat really running and stretched out, that body can really stretch. But there's another thing that I did. I'm going to jump over to my TV paint program. And uh, I went ahead and animated a cheetah running. And uh, I actually added a few extra drawings. So it's going to look like he's running a little bit slow. But I wanted to add the drawing so we can see the movement a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and play this at speed. And the reason I did it at this angle was I wanted to show you, first of all, you know, they're kind of light on their feet. So you can feel, even though there's, a, you know, you can feel some weight to this animation, he's much lighter on his feet than, let's say, than that tiger animation that I did where he's running, which I'll, I'll compare to in just a minute. But one of the reasons, another reason I wanted to show it at this speed, I'm going to drop it way down. I'm going to drop the speed way down. So now we can really see the action. And one of the things I wanted to point out that I didn't cover when I was talking about the run cycle on the lion, and all cats have this, is right in here when the cat throws the arms back, the front arms back, those back legs come forward on the outside and the front legs are on the inside always. So I just wanted to point that out in case you're trying to do a run and you're confused on whether or not the legs, the front legs go on the outside or the inside. Keep those arms on the inside. The back legs come up on the outside. And the other thing to notice, too, is that the cat is always off the ground twice in every stride. Okay, so he's off the ground here, 
grabs hold, off the ground there, then the back feet, off the ground, front feet, off the ground, back feet. And also notice, notice when he pulls back how those front arms tuck right up under the body. And I'm going to just, I'm going to click through these now. If I come through now, watch, watch the path of action on the, on the feet as the front feet grab the ground and then come back up the arc coming back, the arc, they arc this way coming back. They don't arc, they don't come up and then come up here and then reach if that makes sense. So there's a, a big circular loop that the, that the paws make. If you watch, if you watch it at speed and put it right at regular speed, you'll see that there's a, a loop that those feet make when they're running. Okay. I just wanted to point that out. And also going back to that head, you know, once the cat, this is, this is a cat, this animation is a cat that's not quite up to full speed. He's still trying to get the momentum, which is why you see the head bobbing. It's throwing, he's throwing that momentum forward in order to get the momentum going. Once that cat is up to speed, you'll see the head level right out. If you watch video of cheetahs running and they're in full gallop and they're, they're focusing on their, on their prey, you'll see their head sits pretty still and the body does all the movement around them. But here I wanted to show something a little bit more dynamic and show you how you can get some thrust using that head, throwing that momentum back through the body. Now compare this to a, to the tiger that, that we did in profile. And when I play this, look how much heavier this cat is. They're all about muscle and, and you know, they, they very much uh, need to try to ambush their prey. You know, if you watch a tiger... Um, they spend a lot of their time, you know, sneaking up and getting within, you know, just feet or, or just a few yards of their prey before they explode and go after them because they don't have that ability to hit super high speeds for a long distance. So, you know, they 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 have a disadvantage there. Their advantage, obviously, is their strength and their ability to take down larger prey. All right. So I'm going to go back to here. Once again, I just want to mention, uh, 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 you know, they can get up to speed. Now, uh, a cheetah can't man maintain that speed. They can only go for a few hundred feet, actually, at full speed before they have to call off a, 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 a pursuit if they don't catch their prey right away. And so, um, so anyway, that's the, that's the movement there. You guys will be getting these files, so you'll be able to analyze it. But I, I just I wanted to show something in three-quarter to really show you. I mean, look how funky... Look at that. I mean, that's they get into this position, you know, that they're those that back end is tucked right in, tucked right in, and then grabbing the ground and pushing off. And even, you know, if you look at the back feet right here, I'm, I'm even spreading out those toes as it comes off the ground to try to spring off. There we go. Also, too, look at that. Look at the chest. You know, the shoulders. Remember, I was talking about these are right here or in right here. These are the shoulders with a very small chest area. And those shoulders come down and back and then up. Oops. And then back again. So you can see the movement on those shoulders right there. And you can also see the kind of that S that the the s curve happening in the body as the legs come forward you can see the hips come down and up underneath and uh and those back legs grab the ground okay so why don't we jump back into photoshop we've gone over we've gone over the um the build of the cheetah and you know we can see the proportions how much thinner they are and or leaner i should say um but let's go ahead let's go ahead and draw a couple of them so remember I was talking about the cat really being, um, having that ability to stretch. I'm going to, let's just go ahead and draw one. So I'm going to start with that small head. I'm going to go very, very loose. I'm going to go with that gesture. And once again, in, into this lumbar section, that, that's the, that's the, um, that's the, the bottom of the back. 
Now, back into this lumbar section. Now, this is going to go up into the pelvis. Now, the pelvis, when, it, when it's at full reach, the pelvis is up in the air this way. If you look at that, that top plane, it's like that. When the cat is going to be, when those hips come underneath, that head's going to come up, and we're going to get this kind of feel, and those hips will come down. as the front feet come underneath like so. I'll do a better drawing obviously, but I wanted to show you that's where the hips and the tail comes back like that. So that's where the hips come down and then that, and that full stride, those hips come up, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and let's get that, that rib cage. It's gonna come right in here and you're gonna get really thin I'm actually, I drew that way out there too far. Got those hips up in the air. The hips are there. Now, remember, I'm always talking about keeping those parallel. Well, in this case, the cat is running so fi fast and they kick off so hard that those feet will straighten right out. And the, the back feet will flop around. It looks kind of weird, actually. And then we're going to get these shoulder blades. I draw through and be way up here to really have them reach. So you got the bones here right into the feet. So you can see you now we get really thin right through here. Ribs come down. There's skin right in here that's going to stretch. We've got all the muscle that we talked about before, but the, that muscle is a lot more slight on the cheetah. Like so. Really can reach. Let's go back, kind of push this one out, maybe bring that paw up. So remember that profile. That profile is a lot different. That head is smaller. I'm going to get that. There we go. back into the shoulders there so very very quickly I just wanted to talk about you got this shape happening okay and then the other thing too let's get that tail coming off and the other foot let's say the back foot has just come off the ground so it's going to be down maybe in here like so so the chest comes back so we got everything's kind of moving this way and then it follows like so and this right here, actually the skin comes up in here. This gets really thin back here. I'm drawing really hard because I'm, I'm trying to make a point. So it gets really thin back there. And then we get a nice break right there. And actually, believe it or not, I'm going to shrink up that head a little bit. That was a little too much. Because, there we go. That proportion, I'm telling you, those heads are really, really small. So you can see, as that cat runs, 
these feet really, really stretch. I'm going to pull this out even more down to the calf. I'm going to put the, the heel back in here. And then real quickly, that other paw. There's the other shoulder coming forward. And it's there's the other, that's the thumb. There we go, like so. And claws. And we'll just push that back with a little, a little shading there. There. They tend to have a little bit of fur coming off like so. Okay, so there's the front end of the cat, having some problems here, there we go. There's the front end of the cat, reaching forward, reaching, reaching, that shoulder blade if we were to draw through, that shoulder blade is up in here, like right there, the muscles going this way, muscles going this way. Coming down to the elbow and then reaching down like so, okay? And then all your ribs in there. So let's get into the pelvis, pelvic area in the back end of the cat. So once again, this, this skin is really, really stretching right back here. This goes up into, into the belly underneath. You got that kind of feel that happens with the skin. These thigh muscles are really working hard. There's a lot of definition going on in there. Right here, right along that thigh muscle, you'll get a big bulge. Just like any world-class sprinter, you know, you'll see those leg muscles really, really stretch or, or flex here everything's kind of bunching up you got the ankle here's that knee maybe the toes are spread out a little bit having flung apart it's funny if you watch a, a, a cheetah in slow motion there's some really great video on YouTube you can see as they kick off, those toes kind of flop all over the place. And claws, like so. Same thing here. That knee is going to be right in here. Coming right down into our heel of the cat. And those paws flipped back. Like so. And I'll just get right into that tail comes right off the spine. Remember, the pelvis is here, but the tail tends to be up a little higher than that pelvis. And I like to have that. I like to have the tail follow that form. If I'm doing just a single image, a single drawing. It just feels much more fluid to me. I like, I like that look. It just has a lot more. It's a lot more pleasing gesturally. Okay. So there, there's the cat really stretched out. Remember that rib cage is underneath, and we're really stretching everything here. He's really thrusting, driving forward to get that, uh, to get that next stride. So why don't we go ahead and do another one? Drop that size down a little bit. Why don't we go ahead and do another one? This time showing the opposite, showing that that compression. So this is where 
So the cat is coming forward. I'm going to blow this up. I'm drawing too small again, like I always do. And once again, we're going to go really loose. That head has now come up, getting ready to drive forward. And now this part of the body, right there, that's, there's your lumbar section right here. And then it goes right into the hip. And there's your, that's your pelvis there. So this is going to come underneath. We're going to get these feet coming forward like so. So we're going to get this Z pattern right there. Okay. And now the, those, sh those shoulder blades are pulled back here because That arm has come up and it's coming back like so. See how rough I'm going? So that this, as we get into the face, okay, so as we get into the face here, you'll see this really, you get a nice you get the chest coming, you know, this, this gets nice and boxy in here. And then the feet just come way down, way down here like so. Muscle comes down. Once again, everything comes down like so. Right into, like so. So now we've really got this exaggerated, like so, this really exaggerated curvy S shape. And all that muscle is bunched up right in here. Like so. That, those ribs are underneath, right in here. So that rib cage comes down the ribs are in here, then everything else is kind of bunched up. These back legs get very kind of boxy shaped, like so. Now as this has come forward, it's going to pull that the base of the tail down, but the rest of the tail will continue to follow through. So you get something like that. All right, so I'm going very, very rough just to show you those thrusts, the body shapes. There's that, that rib cage, and then this very, very flexible lumbar section of the spine. Okay. A lot of muscle in the legs. The transition into the tail. And then this coming straight back. He's just kicked off with the back feet, or with front feet, I should say. Okay. So, once again, having roughed that in, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and tie it down. Okay. So, once again, we'll just start with the head. There's my little brow. Always start with that brow. Bring this back. Get that little forehead, which is unique for the cat. And that roundness right here. That dark nose. That muzzle comes in. down there we go and we've got the chin okay Let me erase some of this back there that feels better those cheeks 
those cheekbones right here. Remember the cheekbones come come along there with the eye socket right there. So this is all going to kind of curve under. You know, think about all this as you're drawing. Think, you know, it takes a little bit of time once you understand, but once you understand that anatomy, then you can just kind of talk your way through a drawing. And you know, you'll just, you know, you you rough in, you know, what we've done here. You rough in those big shapes. And then you just, and this is what I do. I'm not sitting here literally talking to myself, although I do sometimes. <laughs> but it's just, it's like, okay, I know I got, you know, some fur comes off of here. It's going to follow the form. I know I've got fur that goes in front of the ear, so that's going to do that. But the ear is, you know, turned in this direction. So I want to do this. And I know that I have this that comes off the corner of the ear. And you just kind of, in that way, you just kind of talk your way through the detailed part of drawing the cat. I do the same thing when I'm roughing it in as well, but they're in much broader terms. Okay. There. And then we get a little bit of fur coming off the bottom here. This fur is going to stretch back. There we go. This goes into the trapezius. All of this is really, really stretched. I actually pulled those, pulled that shoulder back too far. There we go. Like so. And then you're going to get a nice bulge of muscle in here. Because the cat's, his head is up, so the muscles kind of bunch up in that section. Once again, you got to have a little bit of fur here. This is going to lead right into that, that flexible section of the cat, which then comes down. We're going to have the hips right there. <clears throat> so I just kind of worked my way right back down, right down the, the back line. Okay. So you've got our triceps in here. Now it's not quite as, you're going to have a lot of bunching of fur and stuff up here, but it's not quite as flexed because He's not taking any weight on it. He's just done the big thrust. He's just pushed off. And so now he's going to be bringing it back through. So here, this is where the, that, that scapula comes down and then the shoulders down here. So this is where this is all going to come up. Right in there. Okay. And just like in our arms, if you bend your forearm, you get a little bunching right in the corner of the arm. So this is where you get a little bit of that there. That's going to come down. But remember what I was talking about earlier. These back legs come in front of that foreleg. Fore so let's go ahead and fit, let's draw in this back leg. So it's pulled up. That muscle is getting ready to really flex. So you've got the knee that comes like this. You got that little dimple in the knee. That's where the kneecap is right in there. And this comes down. This, this distance is fairly long. Okay. And then the, you get a little bunching of fur in here. Down into the ankle and tendon. There's the Achilles tendon. There's a big hollow right in there. Just like on the back of your own heel. You know, if you feel that back behind the on the back of your foot, you can feel that that tendon. Well, this is the same tendon on the cat. And then right into right along here, you've got all of this thigh muscle. 
and then more muscle in here that kind of feeds around like so. Lots of muscle in here. Okay. And then this is going to, this would be bunched up a little bit and then it goes right into the foot. There's a little break right here. And right into the that back foot right there. And you're going to see a toe there. And then it feeds into the toes here. And claws. Okay, so there's that back foot. Now we can continue with that front arm and it comes down. See how we, you know, having worked out that, that rough drawing first, now it's really just, it's about working out these details. It's going to come down right into the break in that wrist. Like so. There's a pad right there and toes. And it's fairly long. I may have I think I may have made that a little bit too long. Let me uh let me do this. There we go. That is a little better. Okay. Now this is gonna come down. Broken up fur in that chest. You know, there's a lot of fur in that chest. Comes around. And now we know, now you know what's happening behind because you already drew it. Now there's the rib cage back in there. But we don't need to draw it. Now on the other side of the chest, that other arm is reaching back. Reaching, reaching, reaching to the break in the wrist here. Once again, I pull this up a little bit. There, we're going to have the thumb right in there. There's the pad, toes, like so. And claws. Okay, whoops, let's get the other side of that, there, it comes in, and just go ahead and darken that up a little bit, just so we can, there's a lot of line work in there, as you can see, and once again, I think I did the same thing, I, I tend to do that, I make the pause a little bit long, so let's just jam it up, there we go. That feels better. All right. Now the other thing I didn't do, I didn't even rough it in. I'm going to go back to my rough drawing. I got so into showing you the uh, that flow and that gesture, I neglected to draw the other back foot. So let's say the other back foot is actually coming forward because they each foot hits one at a time. So let's say it's the next one that's going to hit. So we're going to bring it in. I'm going to bring it forward just a little bit more, which means that foot will come up. There we go. Give it some toes. And it's actually I'm going to do this. It's actually going to come down a little bit because he's getting ready to plant it. and feeds up into that back that back foot okay the only thing I don't like about it is how far out I pushed it I'm gonna put it back pull it back just a little bit see I make little adjustments like this all the time that feels much better so now we can see that here's a foot that's closest to us there's a foot that's starting to come forward and it's still bent down but as that back foot 
there we go, as that back foot goes to reach for the ground, those front, that toes, the feet, the toes start to come up in the air. There we go. We come back into the heel. There's the ankle. Comes back and claws. Okay. Like so. And then this is going to come down. There's a little break in the fur where it connects to the booty. And it comes back. And you get a little flare in the tail. For that balance, he's running hard. Okay? So there, there's that compression where the, those, those feet come forward. And, you know, the ground might be at about this level, at about that height that's and so they just they just fly so you got this this difference between here and here going back and forth I mean there's that gives them a huge ability to really really run hard and run really fast okay so let's go ahead if we draw a cat from the front you know the the cheetah the first thing is they're very very you know if you think about the shoulder blades are very thin. They're very thin this way, width-wise. So if I drew a cat, let's say he's kind of, uh, he's looking off, say he's looking off to our left. I'm gonna have the neck come off here. down and around. I got a little nose over here. I'm just going very, very quickly and we'll rough it in. Cheekbones, remember cheekbones. Okay, so very quickly roughed in. Um, I wanted to sh just show you, here's the, the neck coming down. And it feeds into, you know, you've got the, the, uh, the pectoralis muscles that come down in the front, just like we have, one, you know, I talked about before, we have our chest muscles. But those shoulders come in like so. Shoulders are, you know, the, the shoulders of the cat come in like that of this of this species of cat of a cheetah now on a lion they're going to be much wider space you'll get the shoulders and the elbow here you know and then space there you know they'll be much wider spaced if you're looking straight at the front of them like so and then down into the feet, like so. Okay? There. Now, cheetah is much thinner. And you're going to see that you know, we've got a, a little bit of fur in here. There's not a huge amount of definition. I'm going to have this paw coming forward just a little bit more. But you'll see, you know, there's a little break for the elbow in here. But this is much longer, or much longer limbed and thinner. Right into... There, like so. And there's a little bit of a gap. 
I'll widen him out just a hair. So their ankles come together, but their feet kind of flare out. And then the tail would come off and kind of flare out like so. But you can see how thin, I get some roundness in there. You can see how thin that cat is. And actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lengthen that back foot just a hair. There, that feels better. So pelvis, the pelvic area into that thigh, like so. So once again, let's lighten that up. So once you know, you see how quickly I I did this, and we've got these overlapping shapes. Now it's really just about tying it down. Remember I was talking about how this tends to be pretty squared off going into that eye on the other side in that three-quarter view. Eyelashes, strong cheekbones, like so. There's our flying bird into the nose. Big nostrils. There we go. Where it connects in the cartilage, that connects to the uh, the bone in the nose, the nasal area. And we get that nice S-shaped in the three-quarter black marking that comes down. That's very distinctive cheetah. Where you got these little brows on the cheetah right there. It's dark concave remember it kind of comes in because that's what happens in the uh, on the skull so it gets a little concave in there and back into the head throw a little shadow going over the eye because of those brows being so big There, there's the pupil. There's a little shagginess that comes off the corner of the eye. And that's where those spots will come down, but we're not going to get into the spots. And there's uh, those cheekbones coming down, feeds right into the corner of the mouth. And you've got this muscle definition and fur right in here. There's that fur for the ears. It'll come down. There's the break in there. And some fur coming out there. I'm just going to quickly indicate it here. This is all furry in there. That's all furry. And we can just lightly color that in. There we go. Now we got a little bit of the neck. You'll just see a little bit of it there. And there's not a hard line, although there's, you'll probably see a bit of a line here because we're at three quarter. And then it just goes right into these shoulders this is that won't be quite as defined because that feeds you know you've got the the trapezius that feeds into there and here the deltoid muscles are coming down and that trapezius along the neck feeds right down and down into here into the shoulders 
and do the same. We're going to come in here, and that breaks and comes in like so. Fur tends to grow this way in here. I'm doing it again. Always end up drawing down on the bottom. And we get a little definition there for the shoulders coming in like so. Yep, fur growing like so. These are the flexors, on the forearm. And these are the extender muscles right here in the forearm. Right down into the thumb. There's a claw. Bring those forward. There's a claw, there's a claw. There. See a little bit of that belly back there. Fur. There's the flexor muscles. The forearm. The extender muscles. Right down into that thumb. And claws. Like so. Alright, so there's the front feet. Let's follow that back. Like so. That comes over. And you're going to see that hollow in the back of the belly there. You might even see a little definition here from your from that latissimus muscle right there. And a little break in the fur down underneath there. Thigh. Lots of strong muscle right here. Right into our knee. I'm just roughly indicating. You don't obviously you don't really see it this this in you know that strongly indicated, but I like to indicate it there. And then we've got our Calf muscles, it comes down, ankles. The other thing too, this, and, I, and this is what, something that I remember with people. Here's the ankle. One ankle is higher than the other. And there tends to be a little bit of a curve like so, curve like that. So like if you look at a person, if you look at their, their leg, there's a knee, and calf, on the foot, like so. The calf tends to, you, you get a little bit of curve like this. There's your thigh. Connects up in here, okay. Now, one ankle is higher than the other, and the way I always remembered this as a kid when I started drawing anatomy when I was really young, was if you think about the curve going this way, and these lines coming off like this, I know this sounds weird, but this is how I always remembered it. If you imagine these lines like this, then you'd have, then you'd have this kind of feel. That you'd have an ankle right here, and then the other ankle would be lower. I'm exaggerating it. Okay, so it's matching the curve. If you imagine perpendicular lines coming off that curve, then your ankle is here, and then an ankle is there. And it's the same thing with this cat. So the ankle is lower on the outside, and higher on the inside. That was a real long-winded way of saying the ankles lower on the outside and higher on the inside, but that's that's pretty much how I remembered it when I was young. Okay. And also, I mean, you can see that there, there's quite a bit of similarity between this cat leg and a human leg right there. It's pretty interesting. Now there's our toes.
and then into the toes there and very quickly there's an ankle layer okay and the tail so there's a cheetah from the front so once again look how thin that cat is compared to a lion over there on the right um, okay so that's drawing cheetahs in their bodies so I'm going to go ahead and just tint these a little bit so you can see them a little better but um once again just you know the biggest thing is you know we've gotten to this point we've gone through lions and tigers and leopards and so by this point you know you should be getting fairly familiar with practice about the muscles you know and the rhythms and you know the kind of the flow so now when we start getting into these very specific there we go blow that up a little bit very specific um, species of cat it's really all about just getting a sense of that species um, build so like a cheetah which is the extreme on the light end of the build it's taking all that same anatomy knowledge that we've learned and adapting it to that light build okay so that we've then got a cheetah and then there's a few specifics you need to remember like what we learned about the, the cheetah's head and the markings and and all of that but with practice you, you know these each species starts finding its little niche in your brain and you can recall it and you can sit and you can draw it and, and you know I don't know that you know when I'm doing like finished studio paintings I still rely heavily on my, not just my head but also on reference any kind of reference I can pull together just to make sure I'm getting everything right I can't remember everything nobody can remember everything well I maybe somebody can um, and if they can then they should be teaching this class <laughs> but I um, you know I really rely all of this that I'm teaching has really just come from years and years and years of of drawing and having a passion for these animals and you know I, I draw them because I love them and I, I love what how they look and I love sharing the earth with them and 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 so I just I want to know everything I can about them so anyway these are uh, that's cheetahs and um, we've got one more cat so let's get into drawing cougars and um, that's it so let's let's move forward mm -hmm.